بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الغر الميامين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كما أرسلنا فيكم رسولا منكم يتلو عليكم آياتنا ويزكيكم ويعلمكم الكتاب والحكمة ويعلمكم ما لم تكونوا تعلمون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون صدق الله العلي العظيم Tonight, our program is dedicated to commemorate the martyrdom of our fourth Imam, Al Imam Ali ibn al Hussein Zain al Abidin al Sajjad. Tonight is the eve of his martyrdom. He was martyred on the 25th of the month of Muharram in the year 95 in the city of al Madina Al-Munawwara and then he was buried in the city of Baqi. And Imam Zain Al-Abidin is related strongly, his tradition, his manners, his lifestyle, his objectives are related to the spirit of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is about Remembering those who are disadvantaged, those who are forgotten, those who suffer in this life. It's about sharing our life with them. It's about paying attention to them. It's about remembering them sharing the food, the meal, the sustenance, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us with those who are not fortunate enough in this life, who could not afford a decent living in this life. And the idea of thanksgiving is one of the most noble ideas in the history of ma mankind. This is one of the fundamentals of our faith, of our religion, is to give thanks. So remember me, I would remember you. Remember my blessings. Remember my bounties on you. The bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are countless. وَإِن تَعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا But we take them for granted. We take health for granted. We don't realize the value of health until one day we lose it. We don't realize the value of safety and security. When you live in your neighborhood, in your city, in your town, safe and secure. We don't realize it until we go to areas that are very dangerous, very dangerous, and you cannot leave your house after dark. You cannot leave your wife and your children at home and go to work. I've been to areas, I've been to South Africa, to Nigeria, to Brazil, to other areas, where people tell me that I can't leave my family at home by themselves. I have to be next to them. There was a man in South Africa, I visited him in his office in downtown uh, Johannesburg, and he brought his wife with him. So first I thought he's bringing his wife, you know, to help him in the office. Or sometimes we take our kids for carpool here in Southern California. Neither was his objectives. He said, because I, we, she does not feel and we don't feel safe when she's at home and I'm at work. I cannot focus on my 
on my work. So I have to bring my wife with me to the office and then when I go back, I go with her. We take these values for granted. We take food for granted. We take the drink for granted. In many areas, the reports say 20% of world population, they don't have safe drinking water. 20% of world population. They don't have safe drinking water. And how many types of drinks we have at home, outside? How many types? Look at your table. We have many choices. In other countries, in some countries, they don't have a choice. They would be very lucky if we can get some safe drinking water. Remember me and give thanks and be grateful. Be grateful to me and do not be any grateful. Don't reject me. Don't look at these. Don't overlook these blessings that I have given you. Today, your daughters, your wives, your mothers, your sisters, they can drive by themselves from one point to another point. Even in some, forget about South Africa and Brazil and these countries, even in some Muslim countries nowadays, even in some Muslim countries, you cannot, your wife, your daughter cannot travel by herself. Countries where Muslims are the majority, they make 99%. You cannot leave your daughter, go to school, go to work, or your wife or your sister by themselves. It's not safe for them. We should not take these blessings for granted. We should give thanks. And in the history of our Imams, Ahlul Bayt alayhim afdhal salat was salam, Imam Zainul Abideen stand unique in providing the example of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving thanks to him. Imam Zainul Abideen was 25 years old when his father was murdered in Karbala. Imam Zainul Abideen was the only adult male who survived the tragedy of Ashura. Some historians say he was 23, some of them say he was 25. So he witnessed the tragedy of Ashura. But he gave thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma taqabbal minna hadha al-qurban bilutfika wa karamik. O our Lord, accept this qurban, this sacrifice that we have gave, Imam Hussein alayhi salam, and his brothers and his children and his companions accepted bi ahsan al-qabool with the best acceptance. This is giving thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At the time of a tragedy, if we are able, our Imams, they tell us, if we are able and capable of saying, thank you, my Lord, thank you. At the time of a tragedy, if we say yes, if we say thank you to what have, to this test, if we are able, that is the highest level of Iman and faith. The highest level of Iman and faith when a person at the time, in the midst of his tragedy, his loss, he is able to say thank you. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And the saying says, Alhamdulillahi alladhi la yuhmadu ala makruhun siwah. The only one that you thank him at the time of makruh, at the time of a tragedy, at the time of pain and loss and suffering is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only one you say thank you to him. Because he's putting you to test. Imtihan. This is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Imam Zainul Abideen was able at the time of the most terrible tragedy. Not only in his life, in the life of mankind, when he sees the battleground scattered with the decapitated bodies of his father, his uncles, his siblings, his brothers, his friends, his cousins, and then he gives thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the highest level of Iman. And because of this level of Iman, 
Imam Ali ibn al-Hussein Zayn al-Abideen alayhi salatu wassalam was able to produce a sahifa to sajjadi Zaburu Ali Muhammad sahifa sajjadiya and I urge you I urge each and every person to obtain a copy of this book a sahifa to sajjadi it has been translated to many languages keep it with you this is a valuable book of dua supplication Munajatu al-Khaifin, Munajatu al-Shakirin, Munajatu al-Hamidin, Munajatu al-Raghibin. Fifteen types of Munajat and many other du'as. Many other du'as that has been established and narrated by this Imam, Imam Zain al-Abideen. Why Imam Zain al-Abideen? When you look at our twelve Imams, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt, when you look at those 12 Imams, you find Imam Zainul Abideen stands among them, unique among them in producing this work, this dua, this book, As Sahifatu Sajjadi. The biggest amount of dua and supplication and munajat was produced by Imam Zainul Abideen. Although his father, his grandfather, Amirul Mu'mineen alayhi salatu was salam is, is number one. Is number one in, in his munajat and his dua, dua kumail, dua us sabah and other duas. But when it comes to the amount of the duas, the biggest amount was produced by the fourth Imam, Imam Ali ibn al Hussein Zainul Abideen. There is a reason for that. The reason for that is because after the tragedy of Karbala, when Imam Hussein alayhi uh, salam, Imam Ali ibn al Hussein, he went back to the city of Medina on the Arba'in of Imam Hussein. Now the caravan of Imam Hussein are on the way to Damascus. They're going to reach Damascus in four days, the beginning of the month of Safar. They reach the city of Damascus. So they are now between Kufa and Sham. Then after that, they're going to leave. Damascus, on the way, on the Arba'in, they're going to visit the shrine of the grave of Imam Hussein in Karbala on the 20th of Safar. They, they would be released by Yazid ibn Muawiyah from Damascus. He would give them permission to go back to Medina. On the way to Medina, they make their way on the land of Iraq, on Karbala, to pay tribute to the grave of Imam Hussein. And then from there they would be, they stay three days in Karbala and then they make their way back to Medina. Because the Muslim community after this tragedy proved to be morally bankrupt. Bankrupt. The Muslim community who could not defend the grandson of the Prophet of Islam, the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They could not defend him against killing and assassination. And he, they could not defend the family of the Prophet. Zainab alayhi salam is the granddaughter of the Prophet. She saw her grandfather, her, her, her grandfather used to carry her and play with her and entertain her when she was young. But the Muslims could not defend this holy family against tyranny and aggression and abuse by Bani Umayyah. The vast majority of the Muslim Ummah, they chose, they chose to be with the tyrant, to stand on the side of the tyrant, not on the side of Ahlul Bayt, the oppressed. What do you call this? Is this real Islam? When you see the vast majority of the Muslims who do pray and fast and they go to Hajj and they say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And they recite the Quran. But when it comes, when it comes to the truth versus falsehood, the truth is standing in a camp versus falsehood. And the other camp they choose to be on the side of falsehood. This is moral and ethical bankruptcy. They are zero. When it comes to akhlaq, 
When it comes to values, they are zero and sub-zero, sub-zero. So Imam Zain al-Abidin realized that this nation, this ummah, he did not have in his, in his heart any grudge. He had no sense of retaliation or grudge or hate against them because they killed his father. No. He's Imam of Ahlul Bayt and Ahlul Bayt are special. Ahlul Bayt cannot be compared to the rest of the people. أهل البيت الله says in the Holy Quran إنما يريد الله ليذهب عنكم الرجس أهل البيت ويطهركم تطهيرا You are thoroughly and completely purified and refined in your spirit, in your manners, in your أخلاق So of course they are different if it was someone else other than Imam Zain al-Abideen seeing his father being butchered in Karbala and massacred and cut into pieces and his family taken captives from one city into another city and people they paraded them in the streets and people they watched them when they passed through their markets and, and their cities and their neighborhoods, that person would, wouldn't have forgotten this tragedy and his heart would have been filled with a grudge and hate and retaliation against the, such community and such nation. But Imam Zain al-Abideen is different. Imam Zain al-Abideen is completely different. Imam Zain al-Abideen, a man comes to him and he slanders him right in his face. Imam Zain al-Abideen turns his face the other way. So the man, he runs after him and he comes and he stands again right in front of him and he says to him, أعني, Listen, I was slandering you, not someone else. The Imam answers him. He says, أعفو. The man says, I am slandering you. The Imam answers him, and I forgive you. I forgive you. This is the akhlaq. Another man comes again, he vilifies the Imam, he maligns him, he slanders him, he defames the Imam in public in the market of Medina. Imagine this is inside al Medina al Munawwara, the capital of Islam, and this is the grandson of the Prophet. And he is being defamed by Muslims, not the Christians or non Muslims. Those are in the Muslim community. After the man finished slandering the Imam, Imam said to him, إِنْ كَانَ مَا قُلْتَهُ صَحِيحًا غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لِي وَإِنْ كُنْتَ إِنْ كَانَ مَا قُلْتَهُ خَطَأً وَظُلْمًا غَفَرَ اللَّهُ لَكَ If what you had said to me, this slandering was correct, I was that bad person, may Allah forgive me. And if you were wrong, then I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. در وسط بازار مدینه یه نفر میاد و فحش و ناسزا میگه به امام زین العابدین وسط بازار وسط جمعیت مردم هر انسانی اگر باشد خب ناراحت میشه دیگه ما بشریم اعصاب داریم اعصاب انسان خورد میشه بعد از اینکه فحش هاشو تموم کرد امام به آرامی فرمودن اگر حرفای شما درست باشه خدا گناه های من این حرفایی که زدید درباره من و این, این چیزایی که بدی که من دارم خدا منو ببخشد و اگر حرفاتون اشتباهه خدا شما را ببخشد This is Imam Zain al-Abidin This is Imam Zain al-Abidin This is the hero So such Imam he had a very clean refined immaculate heart The hearts of our Imams does not carry any grudge, any hate, any rancor against anyone, including their enemies, including their enemies. So he comes to the city of Medina and he wants to transform this ummah. This ummah is morally bankrupt. This ummah went in completely into the wrong direction. The ummah that 
Many of them participate in the massacre of the family of the Prophet in Karbala, and then the other, the rest, they keep silent. What do we say in the ziyarah of Imam Hussein? Allahu ummatan qatalatka, wa ummatan dhalamatka, wa ummatan sabi'at bidalika, faradiyat bi. May God curse, may God not. Curse means, what does it mean? May God never embrace such ummah with his mercy. The ummah that murdered you, abused you, and the ummah that healed about the story, and they were happy about it. They were happy about it. They didn't care about it. That was the condition of the ummah. Imam Zain al Abidin came through his dua. The best way of transforming the person insan is when you connect him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best way of connection to Allah through dua, through supplication. The best way to, to strengthen this relationship is the dua. Look at his duas. Look at the style, the way he, he supplicates, the way he does munajat, the way he speaks to Allah. No one can produce such a style, believe me. No one except someone who's born in the household of Tahara, of Ahlul Bayt. Dua Abi Hamza al Thamani. The Munajat. Dua Makarim al Akhlaq. Allahu Akbar. Makarim al Akhlaq. Wa ma adra kama makarim al Akhlaq. Please, I want you, I want you to research. This particular dua, dua makarim al akhlaq, and reflect on it. Reflect on makarim al akhlaq. See how Imam asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to perfect his manners, his akhlaq. See the way he speaks to Allah. This is the essence of life. This is the beauty of life. When someone lives in this life and he has akhlaq. If he has akhlaq, he has everything. If he doesn't have akhlaq, even if he has the best certificate from the best school, even if he has the best business, even if he has the best money, that would not help him. If he doesn't have akhlaq. It is akhlaq that makes us real human being. Akhlaq. The Prophet says, my objective is not to teach you how to do business, how to... The, my objective is to make you real human being. To enjoy your humanity, your insaniyah. You must enjoy it. And this is exactly what's the objective of Imam Zayn al -Abidin. So he produced this dua and he started disseminating, spreading these du'as among the Muslim Ummah. They would listen to his du'a. And they would learn it, and some of them would memorize the du'a. So he was teaching them and educating them and changing them through du'a. And let me say something here while we are speaking about du'a. I know many of you, you recite du'a. I know many of you, you have this opportunity of reciting the dua but for those who so far did not have time to recite dua make the dua recitation your daily routine part of your daily life and dua is different than salat huh? don't get me wrong we have salat the five daily prayers these are salat but we have supplications and du'as after the morning prayers, after the dhuhr, the asr, maghrib and isha. And we have daily supplications. Today was Thursday. There is du'a for Thursday. Thursday morning there is du'a. Friday there is du'a. Saturday, Sunday. There is du'a for Thursday night. Du'a kumail. There is du'a for tomorrow morning. Salatul Fajr, after Salatul Fajr, Dua al Sabah. There is tomorrow, again, tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., 10 a.m., Dhuha, at the Dhuha time. There is another Dua, Dua al Nudba. There is Dua Friday before sunset, Dua al Samat. We have a plenty of Duas. But 
With Imam Zain al Abidin, I want you to get this copy. It is found on website. You don't have to buy the book. You don't have to buy the book. Dua Makarim al Akhlaq. Just type it there, you will find it. And there is some interpretations, tafsir on this dua. It tells you the meaning of the dua. What the Imam is trying to say and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make it a daily routine. Otherwise, you are losing. You are losing. If you don't speak to Allah, you lose, my friends. If we don't speak to Allah, we lose. We lose. We lose. Some people, they don't speak to their parents. There is some loss in that. Some people don't speak to their wives. There is some loss in that. Some people don't speak to their children. There is some loss. Some people don't speak to their cousins, to their neighbors. But the biggest loss, when we don't speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the day passes by and you don't get three minutes, five minutes of dua and supplication. That is the biggest loss. That is the biggest loss. And Imam Zayl Abidin, he furnished us, he provided us with these du'as. We have them available. Sometimes a person says, I don't know what to say to my Lord. I really don't know. There is the book. Go and open the book available. And see how the Imam speaks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. About the thanksgiving work of the Imam, the charity work of the Imam. The charity deeds. Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salatu was salam. Let me read what the historians say about him. This is a collection from many history books, and some of these books are written by the scholars, Sunni scholars. Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam, every single day, wa kana min karamihi wa sakhaihi. أنه كان يطعم الناس إطعاما عاما في كل يوم وذلك وقت الظهر في داره. After صلاة الظهر, every single day, the house of Imam in the city of Medina was open to the public to come and eat. He would open every single day, every single day throughout the year. Some of us we give once a month, maybe once a week. But every single day you open your own house, you open your own house to people to come and eat. I don't think many people would do that. Even though people, many of them, they are rich, they have the facility, the room to cater, to provide, to help, but they choose not to. Imam alayhi salam, his house is between the shrine of the Prophet, Masjid al-Nabi and Baqi' in that area, Mahallat Bani Hashim. And his house is open every day after the, the Dhuhr prayers. And also, he used to, he sponsored 100 families in the city of Medina that he would give them every single day. He will take food to their homes in the evening. During the day, he opens the house. During the night, when night falls, he will carry the nap bag on his, on his shoulder, on his shoulder, he will carry it on his shoulder. And he, he goes and he distributes the food to the poor families, to those who are orphaned, to those who don't have fathers, to those who don't have a sustainer, a provider. He was their provider. And some of them, some of them, they realized the Imam is coming to their homes, so they would wait for him. They would wait for him. They know that this is the time where the Imam arrives. So they, they would wait for him. But the Imam would not disclose his personality and his name. Imam alayhi salam, whenever he carries the food on his shoulder to the orphans, to the poor, he covers his face. He was anonymous. They did not know him. They would see him, they talked to him, 
but they don't know they don't know anything about his identity. When did they know? When did they realize? After his martyrdom, after he was buried for several days, no one was there to bring them the food. They realized, oh, for so many years, it was Ali ibn al-Hussein, Zayn al-Abideen. This man, he used to come to my house, and I didn't even recognize him. I get the food from him, and I don't know, this is the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then, وَكَانَ إِذَا أَعْطَى سَائِلًا قَبَّلَهُ When he gives food or money to someone, he would, he would kiss that person as a gesture of love and compassion and affection. قَبَّلَهُ Why? They ask him, why do you kiss him? He says, حَتَّى لَا يُرَى أَثَرُ الذُّلِّ عَلَيْهِ I kiss this person so he does not he does not look at himself as being low in front of me. I, try to, I treat him like equal, like a friend, like a friend. So when he gets the money or the food from me, he doesn't feel that I am higher than him. I have higher status, social status than him. I treat him like a friend. So he does not get embarrassed. Subhanallah. This is when you give from the bottom of your heart, this is how you give. This is how you give. And then Imam Zain al-Abidin used to give the best in his house. What is the best? The most he loved, he used to provide for the, for, for, for the, for the poor. And he used to recite this surah, You would not attain righteousness and nearness to God until you give from what you really love. One day he was fasting and his jariah, the maid that works in his house, she prepared some grapes for him to break his fast on grapes. Just before sunset, the sa'il, the faqir, the poor person came and he knocked at the door. An imam was just about to break his fast and the grape was in front of him. He said, carry it to him. The maid, she said, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, there is something else we can give him. We have other types of food. He said, no, because I love this food and I am about to eat this food, I want to give up on this food. And he recited this verse, Lan tanalul bir. Ma'niya in ayah, این است که شما ای مسلمان ها ای مؤمنان شما به درجات بزرگ ایمان حقیقی نخواهید رسید مگر شما از چیزی که شما دوست دارید و قلبتون به اون تعلق داره از اون باید بدید به دیگران اما چیزایی که اضافی هم همیشه هرچی که نمیدونم کاسه شکسته و نمیدونم دیگ سلاخ داره و نمیدونم فلان و فرنچر نمیدونم بیس ساله و بوی نمیم چی میده اینا بدیم به فقرا لباس هایی که 20 سال پوشیدیم و نمیدونم اینا اینجوری دیگه وضع ما غذایی که باید به گربه بدن میان به این این اون میدن از اون چیزایی که ما دوست داریم که نمیدیم از اون لباس های خوبی که ما میپوشیم نمیایم بعد داریم بگیم فلان اینو برای خدمت شما نمیدیم قرآن برعکس میفرماید میگه از اون چیزایی که واقعا شما دلتون به اونها چسبیده اونا وقتی که بدید این کرمه این ایمانه لن تنالو البر When you give the thing that you love your heart is attached to them and you cherish them and you want them and you love them you find someone who is in need One day I saw this scene I was in the shrine of Imam Hussein there was a father sitting next to me and his son, he had these, uh, what they call them, they buy these to the children, not the iPhones, the, s huh? iPods, yes, iPods. iPods, yes. Son was playing with it. Another person came, a mother came with her son, maybe three years old or four years old, and he was looking at this iPod and he said to his mother, 
Mommy, I need one of these. So the man was sitting next to me. He took his son's iPod and he gave it to that son. I said, why do you do this? This is expensive. He said, I know. But I know this mother, she can't afford it. She doesn't have the money. And she has a son and he's looking at this. This is Iman. This is Ithar. This is sacrifice. This is sacrifice. When you give to others what you love and you cherish and you need and your family needs, but you say, listen, Allah has given us for so many years. What would happen if I give today or tomorrow or this week or that week? I don't enjoy this. I give it to others. This is, this is real generosity. And Allah exactly says this in the Quran. لَن تَنَالُ bir. You would never attain iman, righteousness, piety, until you give from what you cherish. Hatta tunfiqu to spend mimma tuhibun from what you love. Not from what is extra. We always generous, but in the extra things. We give the extra. We don't think something we don't give something new. We don't give something new. Imam Zain al Abidin alayhi salam, he would give from the food that he's about to eat and he loves and the only food he has on the table. Like his grandfather Amir al-Mu'mineen and grandfather, uh, grandmother Fatima al-Zahra and his father and his uncle. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَىٰ حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا They had the only food, the only food they had. And not only one night. Maybe we can do it one night, but when you do it three nights, you go with no food and you are almost dying. And Hassan and Hussein السلام, two little kids, how did they survive? When the father came at the third day, their grandfather Rasulullah came, he saw Hassan and Hussein were shivering because they hadn't eaten for three days. لا نريد منكم جزاء ولا شكورا. An Imam Zain al Abidin, his passion, what was his passion? His passion was when he served the fuqara, the destitutes, the poor, the orphans with his own hands. He had some servants in his house. He had some servants who used to serve him. But he would not give them the food and tell them, carry this food for me, take it to this neighborhood. He will do that himself. This was his passion. This was his hobby. This was his fun, his entertainment, when he enjoys. And believe me, if we do this ourselves, you're going to enjoy it too. When you do it for the sake of Allah, qurbatan ilallah. When you give secretly, Imam Zain al-Abideen used to say, give secretly. Don't let anyone knows about it. لِأَنَّ صَدَقَةَ السِّرِّ تُطْفِئُ غَضَبَ الرَّبِّ تُطْفِئُ صَدَقَةَ السِّرِّ When you give charity in secrecy. This act of giving charity in secrecy is going to extinguish the wrath and the anger of God. Allah would become pleased with you. He will forgive you immediately. Because you did not do this for the sake of people. You did not do this act for the sake of being popular or receiving compliments. You did it just for him, just for him. Just for, for the sake of Allah. The caravan of Ahlul Bayt reached the city of Damascus. Sahl ibn Sa'd al-Sa'idi was one of the companions of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want you to listen to this carefully. He said, I left the city of Medina going to Baytul Maqdis, Jerusalem, to visit Jerusalem. So I passed through Damascus on my way from Medina to Jerusalem, I have to pass through Sham, Damascus. So I arrived in Damascus and I saw people are happy. 
you know, they made some decorations for their markets, for their streets. I said, what, what's happening? And there were, وَهُنَالِكَ نِسَاءٌ يَضْرِبْنَ بِالدُّفُوفِ And there were some women beating the drums. So I said, هَلْ لِأَهْلِ الشَّامِ عِيدًا لَا نَعْرِفُهُ نَحْنُ Are the people of Sham, the Muslims here, they celebrate Eid, which we don't know in Medina. There is another Eid here. What is happening? This is neither Eid al-Fitr nor Eid al-Adha. What's going on? Why people are happy? So I came to a group of old men sitting there. I said to them, do you have a special celebration? They said to me, Ya Shaykh, Ma a'jabaka Ya Shaykh, as sama la tamturu dama. We are very surprised that the sky does not rain blood. I said, why? What's happening? They said, Ayyuha Shaykh, you are a stranger, you are not from this area. He said, no, I'm from Medina. They said to me, Ya Shaykh, Ra'asul Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib, the head of the sever, the severed head of Al Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet وسلم, is being carried now into our city and Bani Umayyah are celebrating. I said, Allahu Akbar, the head of Imam Hussein, they bring it to this city and people, they declare this day as day of Eid and celebration and happiness. What is going on? He said, while I was talking to them, I listened to the drums and the music coming and suddenly I saw the head of Imam Hussein salam entered the city of Damascus and they took the head and the sabaya to the palace of Yazid. Yazid put the head of Imam Hussein in front of him and then he started hitting him with his cane. He carried a cane and he said, Yawmun biyawmi badr, ya Aba Abdullah. We are equal now. Your grandfather Ali and Muhammad, they killed my grandfathers, my forefathers, my uncles. The day of Badr, today I took my revenge. I took my revenge from Muhammad and Ali. And then he asked the Asra, the Usara to go to the, to the masjid, the central mosque in Damascus. So they brought the family of the Imam Alayhi salam, Imam Hussein, Lady Zainab, Imam Zain al Abidin. And there Yazid asked the, one of his speakers, Wa'ad al-Salatin, who works for the, for the royal family, to go and defame Ali ibn Abi Talib and Imam Hussein and his family. So this khatib, he went to the pulpit, the member, and he started verifying and defaming and slandering Ahlul Bayt and Amir al Mu'mineen and Fatima al Zahra and Imam Hussein. Suddenly, Imam Zain al Abidin stood. He said to him, Ayyuha al Khatib, Laqad ishtarayta marzat al Makhluq bisakat al Khaliq, fatabawwa maqadaka min al Nar. You know what you did? You have traded the satisfaction of this tyrant, Yazid, with the wrath of God. You chose to make God angry, to make Yazid happy at the expense of God. You made this tyrant, Yazid, happy with, with your speech. You satisfied him. On the other hand, you drew the wrath and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa Reserve your seat in Jahannam. And then Imam Zain al Abidin said, Ya Yazid, إِذَن لِي حَتَّى أَصْعَدَ هَذِهِ الْأَعْوَادِ فَأَتَكَلَّمَ لِكَلَامٍ لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فِيهِنَّ رِضًا وَلِهَاؤُلَاءِ الْمُسْتَمِعِينَ أَجْرٌ وَثَوَابٍ Give me permission to say my word, to say a word that satisfies Allah 
and there is benefit for those who are listeners. Yasid said, no, we are not giving you permission. So he kept asking him the second time, the third time, those who were in the royal court, they turned to Yazid, they said, Ya Amir, give him permission. He's a young man. He's only 23 years old. What shall he is going to say? Why are you, why you feel insecure? He said, you don't know him. He is 23 years old, but he hails from a family. But Zukkul Ilm Zakka, Allah has given them the wisdom and the knowledge. And I don't want him to go there. He will create a scandal for me. They kept insisting on Yazid. Eventually Yazid, Yazid gave permission to Ali ibn al Hussein, and Ali ibn al Hussein he started his speech. Ayyuha al-Nas, u'atina sitan wa fuzzilna bi sab'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us six things, and he has favored us with seven things. أعطينا العلم والحلم والسماحة والفصاحة والشجاعة والمحبة في قلوب المؤمنين. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has gifted us with knowledge, علم, with حلم for parents, with سماحة, with patience, with فصاحة eloquence, with شجاعة bravery and محبة. Allah. Allah planted our love in the hearts of the community of the believers. Wherever there are true believers, their hearts, they sway towards Ahlul Bayt. They are inclined towards Ahlul Bayt. وَالْمَحَبَّةَ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَفُضِّلْنَا بِأَنَّ مِنَّا النَّبِيَّ الْمُخْتَارُ وَمِنَّا الصِّدِّيقُ وَمِنَّا الطَّيَّارُ وَمِنَّا أَسَدُ اللَّهُ وَأَسَدُ رَسُولِهُ ومنا سيدة نساء العالمين ومنا سبطا هذه الأمة ومنا مهدي هذه الأمة. أن الله سبحانه وتعالى also had made the elite of this أمة of this nation. Those elite are from my family. The first one is the Prophet and Nabi al Muhtar. The second is the Sadiq, which is Amir al Mu'minin. The third one, at tayyar the brother of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ja'far bin Abi Talib. The fourth one is Asadullah wa Asadu Rasulih, Hamza ibn Abdul Muttalib, the uncle of the Prophet. The fifth one is Sayyidatu Nisa al-Alameen, Fatima al-Zahra, Salamullahi alayha. Number six are Hassan and Hussein, Sibta hadihi al-Umma. And number seven is Mahdi hadihi al-Umma, al-Imam al-Mahdi al-Muntadar. Ajjal Allah ta'ala farajahu al-Sharif. أيها الناس من عرفني فقد عرفني ومن لم يعرفني أنبأته بحسبي ونسبي. All the people of Sham, if you have recognized me, so you have. If not, let me elaborate on my nasab, on my family, on my family tree. أيها الناس أنا ابن مكة ومنا أنا ابن زمزم والصفا. أنا ابن من حمل الركن بأطراف الرداء أنا ابن خير من طاف وسعى أنا ابن خير من حج ولبى أنا ابن خير من حمل البراق في الهواء أنا ابن من أسري به من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى أنا ابن من دنا فتدلى فكان قاب قوسين أو أدنى أنا ابن من صلى بملائكة السماء مثنا مثنا أيها الناس أنا ابن علي المرتضى أيها الناس أنا ابن فاطمة الزهراء أيها الناس أنا ابن خديجة الكبرى أيها الناس After that he introduced his father, his grandfather, his grandmother now he's introducing his own father. أيها الناس أنا ابن العطشان حتى قضى. I am the son of that one who was thirsty until he died. أيها الناس أنا ابن صريع كربلاء. أيها الناس أنا ابن مسلوب العمامة والرداء. أيها الناس أنا ابن من بكت عليه ملائكة السماء أيها الناس 
أنا ابن من رأسه على السنان يهدى أيها الناس أنا ابن من حرمه من العراق إلى الشام تسبى He introduced himself People knew that he's the son of Imam Hussein His father has been murdered His father's body has been cut into pieces So Yazid فَخَشِيَ يَزِيدُ الْفِتْنَةِ Yazid feared the commotion and the revolution of the people of Damascus against him He asked the Mu'adhan, it was not the time of the Salat But he asked the Mu'adhan, he said, go and raise the Adhan Let's cut off Ali ibn al-Husayn Do not allow him to finish his, his speech When the Mu'adhan said, Allahu Akbar Imam Zain al-Abideen said, La shay'a akbar min Allah, laqad kabbarta kabiran la yuqaas. When the Mu'adhan said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, Imam Zain al-Abideen said, Shahida biha lahmi wa sha'ri wa dami wa bashari wa mukhi wa idami. This testimony that there is no God but God, not only my tongue, my cell, my, my blood, my hair, every cell in my body testifies that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the Mu'addin said, Ashhadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah, Imam Zain al-Abideen turned to Yazid, he said, Ya Yazid, Muhammadun hadha jadduka am jaddi. This man that you bring his name, in the Adhan, is he your grandfather or my grandfather? If you say he's your, your grandfather, you are lying. And if you admit that he's my own grandfather, وَإِنْ زَعَمْتَ أَنَّهُ جَدِّي فَلِمَ قَتَلْتَ أَبِي وَسَبَيْتَ ذُرِّيَّتَهِ If he's my grandfather, why did you do this to my father, Hussein? Why did you take the family and the children as captives from city to to another city. أقاد ذليلا في دمشق كأنني من الزنج عبد غاب عنه نصير وجدي رسول الله في كل محفل وشيخ أمير المؤمنين أمير. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم